When you dance, you're telling a story. You're not using your mouth, but the way you move, the type of dance in conjunction with the music, it all tells a story. The audience, like taking them on this journey with you and bringing a good portion of yourself to the performance, which break dancing is built upon. That's how it started. It was an opportunity for the youth in the Bronx to gather, to create self-expression. Break dancing is a fusion of acrobatics, athleticism, and dance. It fuses competitiveness, camaraderie, plus improvisation with self expression as well. Break dancers are athletes. Even to an untrained eye, if you never saw a break dancer ever in your life, it would be hard to doubt that what they're doing isn't hard and challenging and required a lot of dedication to master. It's awe-inspiring. This is the science of breakdancing with El Nino. My name is Amy Skinner. I am a physician assistant at HSS. I'm also a provider in the Performing Arts Medicine Collaborative, where we connect performing artists with physicians, physical therapists, and nutritionists to help them get back on the stage to share their gifts with the world. What's up, guys? My name is Alex Diaz, AKA B-Boy El Nino, and I'm a five-time freestyle session world champ. I've been breaking pretty much my whole life. So breaking is a combination of hip hop, 90s party dances, capoeira, kung fu, gymnastics, salsa, young kids in the Bronx trying to express themselves. Very humble beginning in the 1970s, starting at parties, a gathering, dance battles. It grew to different cities, states, countries. When it comes to breaking, it takes several things, his muscle strength and his joint stability and his core strength and the power and the cardiovascular endurance in addition to his flexibility. Breaking basically consists of four elements. You have top rock, footwork, power moves, and freezes. Top rock is all the movement that we do up top. That's usually the intro that gives him an opportunity to feel the music out. So this is using rhythm, using my waist, I'm all the balls of my feet, so I can be nice and agile like a boxer. It's basically improvisation. You're dancing and you're grooving using your salsa steps, your cross steps, back steps, but the muscle groups that you're using, mainly your quads and your calves, while your arms, you kind of want them to be very loose, and then the bounce kind of gives you that hip hop groove. And then the cross step actually has some functionality to it. It's all in the sweep. The secret sauce is all in that sweep. Back and forth, when you're ready to hit to the ground, step out a little bit further. Step back, arm down, and then you can go into it. Next is footwork. Footwork is all the floor work and all the, the six steps and the CCs and the kickouts. That's usually down on the floor. Footwork is very hard and very tiring because it takes the most energy out because you're using all muscle groups at the same time. So you want to be up high on your toes. Sitting on your toes strains your quad muscles a lot. You actually want to be up on your hands like this, on the balls of your feet and the balls of your hands. This is using all different muscle groups to swing your legs around. It takes a lot of strength and agility. You're using your wrists, shoulders, arms, quads. Placing weight on the arms, that requires stabilization of the rotator cuff, which is responsible for stabilizing the shoulder through dynamic movements. Toes, quads, shoulders. You get this transfer of forces from the upper to the lower extremities, and the core is responsible for a lot of that as well. If you were to take footwork out of breaking, I don't know if it would be breaking anymore. Power moves are all the spins that we do. Power moves give the dance kind of that wow factor. Some of these movements are using every part of the body. So I started off with an air flare, which is one of the hardest moves to do. And even to an untrained eye, you can tell that this is something that is hard, something that takes a lot of time and effort to nail down and master. Strength, momentum, speed, and controlling that speed. Velocity. It requires a lot of torque and force of the upper body to generate. 
You're trying to develop speed by whipping. The whip comes from the legs and the core. Similar to ice skating, he would have to twist his upper body in order to get down. Once you develop that whip, you're then trying to harness that energy and you're trying to push your body out to continue the spins. You're using all core, your wrists, shoulders, and then you're pushing your body weight. So you need a lot of upper body strength. If he drops into a head spin, then you get the musculature, like the sternocleidomastoid muscles that have to support the neck. You're using your neck, your trapezoids, right? And at the same time, trying to remain calm and just like spinning, right? You gotta lift those legs up, kick, arms first, legs second. What makes him really amazing as an athlete is that he's able to string together a series of power moves. I combinate power moves by doing a bunch of them and connecting different power moves all at once. Which is particularly challenging, but also fitting to his name, El Nino. He wouldn't get that name if he wasn't known for something very dynamic and powerful. So I might do flare, windmill, air flare, windmill, 90, head spin, right? So I like my combinations are up and down, up and down, and fast. I like to connect movement. Getting tired, you have to come to the freeze. So the freezes or the exclamation point on your set, it's basically how you end in a strong way. You're blocking, finishing all movement, and that's like all core and arms. You want to hold the freeze for about two to three seconds just to give that exclamation point. You give the audience, you give the judges a moment to kind of awe and take in everything that they've just seen. I think freezes in particular, being that they are that exclamation point in the dance, it brings together the artist's creativity, their individualism, their self-expression. It's a lot that comes together very quickly within those few moments. So you have top rock, and then you have a bunch of moves under there. And you have footwork, you have a bunch of moves that you need to learn under there, power moves. Etc. So once you learn that, now that's the fun part. That's where your expression comes out. You can start combinating things the way you like to do it. There's a specific essence to the way we dance, the way we express ourselves. You open your mind up and get as creative as possible. The way people move their bodies, we have different styles. You know, everybody's unique. So for me personally, I focus on flow. So when I break, it's flow, speed, and like originality. I practice as if I am in the battle. Just like MMA fighters or boxers do, I'll bring in a friend to spar with me. We will go rounds together, right? So it's just like prepping, just like a MMA fight or a boxing fight, we do the same thing. One of the several requirements for breaking is the muscle strength and joint stability. Breaking also requires a fair amount of flexibility in order to contort the body into these shapes and these positions. You can see the limbs move, his legs Move, the hips move, the joints bend, they flex, they straighten, and they extend. And a large part is the core, the transverse abdominis, rectus abdominis, internal external obliques, multifidus, erector spinae, and the pelvic floor. It's impossible to do a head spin or any of the power moves where you're inverted if your core isn't strong. What does it take to be the greatest? Um, I think it takes dedication, will, willingness to go above and beyond. A love and a dedication for what you're doing. It gets you over the hurdles, even when it's hard, even when it's challenging. With breakdancing being that you are able to show yourself, to be creative, it's really easy for the audience to connect with you. What I always say about breaking, you train like an athlete, but you have to flow and think like an artist. Right, that's and fire. And you do that, you move on the floor, then you move the audience. Right. The creativity, the self-expression, the practice, the dedication, the time. It's just ready to go. It's amazing. You have to want to be the greatest. Go for it.